Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel Peterson, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the learning path, build and profile a simple web GPU Android application. Let me start by outlining what we'll cover. We'll explore web GPU and Dawn, set up our development environment, integrate Dawn into an Android application, and learn how to render 3D objects. Finally, we'll use Streamline from ARM Performance Studio to analyze performance. Before we dive in, let's understand the core technologies we're working with. WebGPU is the next generation of web and native graphic APIs, succeeding WebGL. It's designed to provide unified access to modern GPU capabilities across different platforms and vendors, with better performance and more advanced features than its predecessors. We're implementing this in C++ because it remains the standard for high-performance graphics applications offering the precise control we need. For our implementation, we're using Dawn, Google's open source web GPU implementation that provides all our essential tools, C++ headers, native API support, and the Tint Shader compiler. Let's set up our development environment. You'll need Android Studio, an Android phone in developer mode, and Python 3.10 or later. In Android Studio, we'll first configure our SDK. Open Settings and navigate to Languages and Frameworks, then Android SDK. Under SDK Platforms, select Android 14.0 Upside Down Cake. Switch to SDK Tools and check Android SDK Build Tools 35 or 36 as I do, either will work. NDK Side by Side and CMake. Accept all licenses when prompted. Next, we'll need ARM Performance Studio. You can find the download link in the learning path. After creating an account or logging in, download the appropriate version for your machine. Don't worry if you have trouble with the login, you can find the download directly through a web search for ARM Performance Studio. Now let's create our project. We'll use Game Activity, which is Android's specialized solution for C++ game development. It's particularly useful because it handles all the Java and native code communication automatically. Things like app lifecycle events and input handling are seamlessly passed to your C++ code through its Surface View rendering system. Select Game Activity C++ and name the project Dawn Web GPU. I'm setting the minimum SDK to API 31 for compatibility with my Android 12 phone but you can adjust this based on your target device. While Android Studio sets up our project, let's grab the source files. In your terminal, we'll create a directory and download the web GPU files from GitHub. After extracting main.zip, we'll begin integrating the files into our project. Back in Android Studio, expand the app and CPP directories and open the built-in terminal. We'll start by copying over the web GPU header file followed by the remaining web GPU files. Take note in the fetch Dawn CMake file in the web GPU directory that it's using stable Chromium 6536. For web GPU integration, we'll replace the existing CMake lists file. The new one includes all necessary Dawn and WebGPU options, includes and library links. The WebGPU.HPP header acts as our interface to the WebGPU functions. Now let's clean up by removing the unnecessary files from the CPP directory. Keep only the CMake list file from the non-nested files. You can ignore any safe delete warnings. Something to be aware of, there's currently an error in the learning path regarding some command paths. Hopefully by the time you watch this, they have been fixed. But if not, you'll need to modify them to match your actual download location. It should start with web GPU files, Android Dawn Web GPU main rather than just Android Dawn Web GPU. You can see the accurate commands that I paste into the terminal. 
The code we've just copied implements the WebGPU's core architecture and workflow. These next three sections explore the fundamental architecture and workflows of WebGPU, progressing from basic concepts to practical implementation. The content covers three main areas. WebGPU's architectural layers, explaining how WebGPU interfaces between the application and physical GPU through adapters, logical devices, and native GPU APIs like Vulkan or Metal. Core concepts of the command system, detailing how WebGPU uses command queues to coordinate between CPU and GPU, and introducing the three main shader types, Vertex, Fragment, and Compute, and the rendering pipeline implementation, describing both the fixed function and programmable stages, shader module creation supporting both WGSL and SPIRV, and the practical steps for setting up the 3D rendering with command encoders, buffers, and render passes. The content focuses more on the foundational architecture and concepts of WebGPU rather than being specifically Android focused, though it includes Android specific implementation details where relevant. For a deeper understanding, I encourage you to explore the learning path documentation and examine the implementation details in the code. Now let's deploy our app. Using ADB, the Android Debug Bridge, we'll copy the files to your Android phone. Make sure your phone is in developer mode and visible to both Android Studio and ADB. If you're working with multiple devices, remember to use the TAC S flag with your specific device ID. Back in Android Studio, click Run. If you encounter a compile SDK error, such as I do, open build.gradle, the one with colon app, you can find it just by searching, and update the compile SDK to 35. After clicking sync, run the app again. After it finishes processing, you should see a cone in Taurus animating on your phone screen. Finally, let's profile our app with Streamline. Launch Streamline and select Android ADB mode. Choose your device and the Dawn Web GPU application. Click the Select Counters button. Enable Used Enhanced mode on the bottom right if you don't see this option. For Mali GPU users, in the window that pops up, add Mali Timeline Events Perfetto to your events to collect, as is on the right of the window. My device doesn't have a Mali GPU, so for this next part, you'll just have to use your imagination. Click Start Capturing, let the app run for a while, then click the Stop button on the top left to view the results. You can find examples of what the Mali GPU results should look like in the learning path itself. Thanks for watching. Check out more learning paths at learn.arm.com. And if you aren't already a member, head over to arm.com slash developer program to join. Later.